Howdy folks, this is what I was talking about with the light that's behind the bookshelf, except I kind of screwed up, it's actually a media shelf. Very hard to find media shelves nowadays because of issues with physical media versus digital, but that's what I'm talking about. Basically, the way it works is when you head over to the screen, you don't have the white, the white spots or light spots here and here anymore. So welcome back to the HD Reality Check as we continue talking about stuff related to high definition and using a little bit of common sense with how we deploy it. You will hear some background noise because it nearly hit 80 degrees out today, so everybody's got spring fever. You might hear some kids running around with their parents hoping and praying that they will tire themselves out and go right to sleep tonight. Things like that. There might be some more loud motorcycles and the whole nine yards. Hopefully there aren't too many motorcycle drivers who want their motorcycles on the internet, but we'll see. <laughs> We're looking at Artings, which is uh, maybe a TV-like site or something like that. We're looking at Artings, the home of this really nice article about TV size versus viewing distance and the hard science behind it. The fun part here is that it has a little slider bar thing, so you pick your screen resolution, I got 1080p selected, and your viewing distance it tells you an optimal size TV. So I'm roughly nine feet away when I watch from the couch. So if I wanted to be able to see all the detail in Blu-ray from the couch, I'd need a 65-inch TV, which I don't think is going to fit. <laughs> And then 4K, if we want to go 4K, 75 inch, <laughs> yeah, like that's going to work. Actually, look at how quickly it goes up to 75, and it just goes off the top of the chart because it won't go past 75 inches. So um, now I'm about four feet away, so if I was 4K, I'm about four feet away at my computer setup from the chair and not the couch. So 42 inch, basically, if I wanted to go 4K and see all the extra detail. But for the most part, I would run into issues with gaming. If I couldn't get the frame rate to between 30 and 60 FPS, then I'd be in trouble. Plus, GTX 760, it's got a couple of years on it. That sucker will probably get replaced when I build Monolith. I'm looking to see what comes out this year, because there's supposed to be some really nice graphics cards that do performance per watt a lot better than my previous favorite, the GTX 970. So... I've been referencing this chart a couple of times over here on Artings, the colorful chart with what's worth it and where, but there is one very important thing that is missing from this chart, and that is the fact that all of these, these color zones are sliding scales. Ideally, if you want to see if, for example, 1080p is worth it, you want to be no further than the distance indicated by the boundary between the blue and the purple, likewise with 4K, 720p, and standard def. So, let's actually take a look and see that my setup does work for Blu-ray with a 37-inch TV. Now, this is the hard science and the hard numbers that undercut Blu-ray. And they're going to undercut 4K as well. This is why you have people saying, I can't see the difference between upscale DVD and Blu-ray. Um, yeah, uh, ask for more information, like what size TV do they have and how, how far away are they from it? Another thing I was thinking of too, when you're walking through that aisle with the wall of TVs in the big box department stores, have you ever considered that if you're standing right in front of a big wall of TVs, you're not very far from the screens, and they look nice, but in a living room where you're six to nine feet away, but here's the thing, can you actually get six to nine feet away from the wall of TVs and the Walmarts and the Targets? You almost have to find a perpendicular aisle and walk a little ways into it in order to get a realistic living room distance. Just something to think about. So yeah, these are sliding zones. Ideally, you want to be on the bottom boundary of whatever screen size TV you're using. So, 37 inches, roughly here or so. So 1080p means about here. I basically want to be no more than five feet away. Now, let's do some measuring here. Back up, and let's assume the... Uh, oh, this is going to be so hard to do with one hand. <laughs> Alright, let's assume the position, like if I'm watching a Blu-ray all by myself and things like that. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's, let's ad hoc it by using the double chin. Let's use the double chin. No. I knew that thing would come in handy someday. So I basically have the tape measure jammed between my head and my neck. So, <laughs> this is so hard to do. Ah! This is not... Nope. Epic fear. Very handy. I use the uh, clip on the tape measure to uh, jam it up against my shirt. <laughs> Alright, it's roughly this amount. 
about 40 inches and one meter for those of you in metric land. <laughs> Roughly 40 inches or so. So I could theoretically get a 4K display that's the same size as a 37 inch TV, which won't exist. I'd have to get at least a 40 inch and it would actually be worth it. So we're a little above, what is it, a little above three feet? Puts us a little above three feet or so, so roughly around the 40 inch mark. That's 4K territory. <laughs> yeah, around the 40 inch mark would be 4K territory from this distance. Now, let's compare it to the couch setup. There's the chair off to the side, and we are basically um, at the couch. <laughs> so, I think it's about nine feet, but just to be sure, let's measure this and see what we have here. 107 inches, or just shy of 9 feet. That's about smack dab in the middle of 720p territory, which makes sense because upscale DVD is not totally the equivalent of 720p, but it's in the ballpark. So being able to get to about here is why upscale DVD looks just fine from that distance. Now those of you who may have heard someone say, I can't see the difference between an upscale DVD and Blu-ray, it might have been the viewing distance, especially with a TV this size. I remember when I was taken aback by folks who thought that this 37 inch was basically a bedroom TV. Because I had a bedroom TV when I was growing up, a horrible little tube TV made by Daewoo of all companies. Yeah, Daewoo was trying to make TVs at the time. The horizontal hold or the horizontal setting was off, so I had my video games getting cut off along the left side. Yeah, it was horrible. But it was a little 13-inch tube, and back then, it didn't really matter what the resolution was, just that you had a picture. As long as you could see something on the screen, that's what mattered. Nowadays, you got to worry about how much fine detail you can see. We've made this more complicated than it really needs to be. But this is why you have people that are sticking with upscale DVD or streaming or even Netflix at standard definition as opposed to going to Blu-ray or even considering Ultra HD 4K at this point. I don't really like this marketing lingo like Ultra HD, woo! But yeah, that's why you have people still saying, oh, I can't see the difference. It might be their setup. And this is the part that the HD rants did not address. There's hard science behind someone with 2020 vision, screen size, and viewing distance. My setup, if I watch movies from you know the computer position, like what I game with, may, is uh, tuned for 1080p. I could actually go 4K if I really wanted to. However, from the couch, we are squarely in 720p territory to where it's about 50% worth it, which is why upscale DVD works just fine from that distance. And then 480p picks up at like 10 feet or so, so I'd probably notice if I was streaming Netflix at standard def versus HD, so... Actually, I should do that. I should do back-to-back Blu-ray and then Netflix for a movie that's that I have on both formats. So, uh, also, Amazon Prime went $9 a month for streaming HD. I might consider that uh, as an alternative to Netflix, because Netflix, you had to pay 10 or something. But still, the annual Amazon Prime actually comes out to 8 something a month. So, I don't know. If, uh, if, 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 we'll have to figure that out later. But this is these are the hard numbers behind... These are the hard numbers behind getting the full benefit of the increased screen size. And the big thing is, here's 4K. Look at how slowly that number... For, I mean, basically, 4K, you might as well have a projector. Look at this. Look at how slowly that bottom that bottom thing increases. And then we got 8K somewhere down here. But, um, yeah, look at how look at how flat, almost flat that line is. Ideally, if you had a 4K TV, you'd want to be on this boundary, which is a problem. Because with this, with this screen size that I currently have, uh, come on, little pop-ups. All right, so with the screen size that I currently have, I couldn't be more than a little more than two and a half feet from the screen. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so Ultra HD, for, to get the full benefit from a, H, from a 4K TV at roughly this size, couldn't be more than a little more than two feet from the screen, which would mean I'd have to be sitting at attention while watching the 4K movie. I couldn't even lean back in the chair. That's why I'm going to be an absolute laggard when it comes to 4K, because it's next to impossible at this screen size for me to get the full benefit from it. And you figure I'm about four feet away if I lean back in the chair, Full benefit of 4K at roughly 4 feet doesn't happen until this TV is at least 65 inches. 
<laughs> nearly double the size. So, I'm sure I could see a partial difference with 4K, which is what I hinted at earlier, because with the distance that I am about four feet, that is about a little ways into 4K territory. But I'd have to sit at attention if I was watching something in 4K and wanted to see all the extra detail, because at this screen size. So, something to think about. These, this is the hard numbers and the hard science behind why people say, oh, this is, you know, Blu-ray, I don't really see the difference, because they might be too far away to see the difference, or digital versus Blu-ray, in the case of 720p or 1080 streaming versus Blu-ray. You consider if Blu-ray is the creme de la creme of 1080p formats, then you'd want to be on this purple line between blue and purple. So, just something to think about. <sighs> Now, when am I going to get around to talking about film grain, I wonder? Probably when I turn the, the house lights back on. It is so dark with this setup! But yeah, optimal viewing distance with 2020 vision based on etc. etc. Uh, the missing detail from this chart is you want to be on the bottom boundary of whatever, whatever screen size TV you have. So that basically means that it's that Ultra HD or 4K or whatever the hell you want to call it, I'd say 2160p. That would mean that the next TV size up from this, I'm pretty much guaranteed to not get the full benefits from. I get some benefit, but not the full benefit, based on the, this chart. So it's something to think about here. Anywho, I hope this clears up the discussion about Blu-ray versus upscale DVD. It could, it could come down to, number one, their vision, number two, their TV size and quality, some panels are better than others, and the viewing distance. And that is the rest of the story on, oh, you can't see the difference between Blu-ray and upscale DVD? Are you blind? No, they might be too far away. Just something to think about. Multimedia J out.